What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another panel live. And I've got a surprise guest waiting in the green room. Why well, he's not a surprise guest? I talked about it on the promotional stuff. Got Xander in the green room. I'm going to go ahead and bring him in. Boom, Mr. Xander. How are you How's today? I'm doing great, man. Thanks so much for having me on. We met, we almost. Um, we wanted to do this last week. We couldn't do it, but uh, tonight is the night, and so I'm excited to finally be here talking about 10,000 volts, man. This is awesome. I love the background you got going on here. Yes, and while I'm I'm in another undisclosed location, um, mm. so so I'm not at home right now. I'm in an undisclosed location, and uh, so I figured well, I'd put some I put a background up in in celebrating that we are here for the panel has spoken results video. And um, so this was also supposed to be, Rob was supposed to be here as well. Rob's got tied up at work. Uh, he may make it by the end. And so we will, uh, we'll just kind of go through as we normally do. Um, and uh, for those of you who, I saw somebody in the comments, um, we got the comments up. So feel free to talk about it in the comments. I see Ronnie Parker, Angelo, uh, wow. AJ from AJ's Happy Fun Time channel and the, the Mr. David Langley said, uh, what is this? Well, what this is, is it's a panel result video. So what I do with these videos is I put a post up on my social media uh, for an album or sometime if it's a track versus track and to list your tracks from your uh, most favorite to your least favorite. And then they get a scoring system. So since this um, album has 11 tracks on it. The track that you pick as your favorite will get 11 points in the pool. And the track that you pick as your least favorite will get one point. And, um, and then we tally them all up. I think we had, I can't remember how many people was on the panel this time around. It was around, um, it was 19 actually. I'm sorry. I'm burping. I just ate. But, um, <laughs> so the lowest possible score could have been 19. Okay. And uh, Brent, <laughs> AJ said Brant and, Jer Brant and Jarrell. <laughs> um, What's Jarrell? Uh, so, uh, so the the lowest score, if everybody picked the same song last, mm -hmm. uh, it, we would have only had 11 points. And if everybody picked the same song as their favorite, it could have had 209 points. So the, so the, Highest possible score is 209. Lowest possible score is 219. Of course, you know, we never were KISS fans. We never agree on everything. <laughs> we, we never agree on anything, hardly. Oh, um, if we did, what's the fun in that, right? <laughs> but before we get started, I do want to introduce Xander. Uh, Xander is from KISS Army Things. Before we get started, for anybody who don't know who he is, our channels are very closely affiliated with each other. So if you've seen me, there's a good chance you've seen him. But I don't like to take that for granted. So um, just a quick pitch for your channel, uh, Xander, to people who might not have seen your channel before. Yeah, for sure. So my brother and I started a KISS podcast almost three years ago. Um, he uh, and my wife, we uh, we call co-hosts. We take turns. Uh, usually it's uh, my wife and I nowadays, but we uh, have a podcast on YouTube that we do every week, every Sunday at noon. And we also do some other non-KISS podcast stuff. We play some KISS games and we do some other KISS, uh, fun KISS videos. And so, yeah, if you want some extra cool KISS content, check us out on YouTube under KISS Army Things. And then you can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram as well. All right. So, like I said, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, be on the show tonight. Everybody that is in the chat and in the stream, I see you guys chatting it up over there already. Um, thank you for taking the time to be short notice. Uh, this was something that I actually filmed um, last week and the the video that i originally filmed and edited was supposed to come out yesterday and i intended for xander and and uh, rob to be in that original video and due to some scheduling conflicts we weren't able to do it so since i had an evening to myself i went ahead and filmed it edited it and everything but after going back and watching it kind of doing qc on it and final edits i just wasn't really happy with it because that's not really the true nature of a panel video. Usually one results video is usually me and at least one other people. We've had as many as five people 
uh, I think in one panel video, we had six people uh, in all on the screen all at once. Um, so that's what this is. It's just a celebration. And I, and, I always, and I went back and looked and noticed that I did several of them live there towards the end. So I decided, well, since this is kind of the return uh, panel, uh, that maybe we not do it the way we used to, where we have it well, multiple um, posts and where it is done live. So um, I, I kind of like to drag my feet the first 15 minutes, uh, first 15 minutes of the video just to give people an opportunity to get in. Uh, sometimes I notice like it'll start off, we've got five people, we're now up to 13 and people come and go as they can. You can also watch this on the replay. So if you miss any part of it, come in late, miss it entirely. Um, I noticed some familiar faces that's usually in this chat that I don't see right now. So um, some people may not have caught the part that we were going to have it, or they may get here late. So um, I don't have my album, Xander. Like I said, I'm in the, a bunker. I don't have an album. So would you like to show off anything that you have of the album? Um, I'm still looking for, I do have the album. I bought the, uh, uh, and I may still, I kind of show that at the beginning of my video that I made. I may clip that out and release that like as a little shorty unboxing of it, um, mm. which I unboxed it also on your channel as well, uh, Xander, when we were talking about different kiss things that we had gotten. That was and, awesome. Uh, um, but I'm still on the lookout for the CD. I've seen them on eBay. I've seen them on eBay for around thirty, forty dollars. They're starting to come down in price as more people are starting to put them on there. So, um, so I'm still holding out for possibly be able to get one of those. So is the CD the only thing you have, Xander? Yeah, the CD is the only thing I have. So I decided just to get the CD this time. Usually I'm the one that goes big too. You know, I get the CD, I get the vinyl, I get the vinyl variant, picture disc, whatever. Hey, what's up, Glenn? What's up, everybody? Hi, Emily. Hi, Angelo. I love seeing everybody um, in the comments. Um, AJ corrected himself. He said Jendel. He said Jarrell earlier, but he meant Jendel. So I get it now. That makes sense. But I love uh, seeing everybody in the chat. So thanks, everybody. But uh, yeah, so the CD was... Uh, the only thing that I got this time around. So I picked it up on the day it came out and I love it. I think it's really cool. So here's the artwork. I'll try and get it to where there's no glare. I feel like we've all seen the artwork now uh, by this point. It's pretty cool. Uh, there's the back cover. But yeah, so the CD here is really cool. It's red and black and it has this almost um, rock and roll over s sort of look to it with the sort of saw blade spinning around. And then of course it has the ace lightning bolt. So I think it's uh, really well designed here. I'll take off the, I'll remove the CD real quick and show you what's underneath. Uh, and yeah, Brant did show this uh, on his channel or somebody did where, um, or my channel where underneath is the pictures of mm -hmm. Ace and Steve and everybody uh, in the studio, which I thought was really cool. So yeah, overall uh, the packaging is really great. And then just some lyrics here uh, on the back cover. Um, and of course on the inside too, I think it actually folds out into a poster. I might as well go and show that because of course, we all love it when there's some extra goodies inside of an album. And I love lyric sheets, but I also love huge posters. And this, to me, yeah. could have easily been the album cover, and I would have been just as happy with this. If they had 10,000 volts running right across here, um, that would have been awesome. But, yeah, I love how Ace is, like, drawing power from, you know, who knows what. Probably himself, the Earth. It doesn't matter. It's Ace freaking freely. It's just an awesome uh, awesome design, awesome packaging. And you showed your uh, vinyl, which was, I think you and Rob both had like some sort of blue and red splatter. Was that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm kind of, I, I don't think that the, well, on the, you know, whenever you pull out the, uh, whenever you have the album, the mm -hmm. album, it's a gatefold, even though it's only a single album, but it opens up to that big, that big uh, poster there, but it's kind of cropped because yeah. I've noticed that you have more of a, it's more of a four by four boxy where with the, the album, it's kind of cropped a little bit. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to getting the CD just to have that fully kind of uncropped uh, uh, photo. And, uh, and yeah, but I love the way the vinyl looks. I love that they have that thick kind of lyric sheet in there that has the larger pictures that's behind the CD. Um, and people are talking about how hard, the CDs have been defined, and they are at some point in time. Um, 
they were sold out on Amazon. I think they've been restocked on Amazon, but they were sold out on Amazon. And the uh, the lenticular CD is still sold out on Walmart. I, I don't even know if it's going to get restocked. It might have been one of those cases where they made so many for Walmart and they're not going to make any more. I'm yeah. still kind of holding out, but I do have a few uh, that I'm watching on uh, eBay to see if, and, you know, I may buy it at $30, $40 for it because I just, I want to have it. Um, but yeah, it has been hard to find. So uh, it's, it's almost uh, 15 after. So we're going to get into the panel. We're going to talk about you guys. We're going to talk about um, you, the, you guys are the panel. We collectively are the panel. And I'm, I always like to call you guys out individually and maybe even talk about you as we go along with what songs you picked as a favorite, might not have picked as a favorite. Uh, and uh, that's just always was part of the charm of this was you guys being involved and actually being a part of the, the results and being a part of the video itself. Um, but uh, so on the panel, we had 19, as I said before. So it was me, Xander and Rob, and then John B. Good, Dark Light, Evil Eyes, 4070, Thomas Hubner, Jason Flom from The Music of Kiss, um, Super Kiss, who has his own channel, Starman212 of Kings, Kiss Dude, which is Angelo, who's in the chat, uh, Sublime, Michael Lean, Tales of a Kiss, Kiss Geek, which is Glenn, who's in the chat. And Glenn, what is it about? Uh, what time is it there? About maybe one or two in the morning? Glenn's from across <laughs> the pond. Uh, Rick R. I think Thomas Hoopner's across from across the pond, too, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Rick R., Emily Graziano, Miss M., who is in the chat, Future Squash, Metalhead, uh, Metalhead 1986, and David King, who is also across the pond in England. Uh, so, um, so international. We're going international here, folks. And uh, people came out for Ace. I uh, want to just talk a little bit about the album before we get into uh, – yeah, I figured it was late. There you go. Thank you so much for hanging out and staying with same with us so late, man. You're a trooper. We'll have you back on the show. We'll have you back in a panel video real soon. Um, but we talked a little bit about it in your video, uh, Xander, how this album has been very well recepted, uh, received, but it's also been kind of polarizing. People are not really straddling the fence on it. They either like it for what Ace and uh, what Ace did with it, or they don't like it. And they, they feel like some people talk about how, oh, it's Ace just doing what Ace does, making songs about space. And there's other people who are going, oh, my God, I can't believe Ace has made an album like this. Um, you know, uh, so, but I, I think I mentioned uh, in my video about people have given certain songs a, a bunch of crap, like the song Constantly Cute. But I mentioned in my video that I don't know if we'll even never see the light of day. Um, but I mentioned it may, this album may have constantly cued on it, but at least it doesn't have a song like Dolls. Right, yeah. From, so, um, yeah. So, you know, <laughs> so we take the good with the bad. And, and, yeah. and I think this album, you know, I think it has a lot for everybody. And it's got songs that pretty much, the, the consistency of the album runs in the same vein. But I think that there is a, a lot of flavor and a lot of difference <clears throat> in songs so what that but all in all i will say this that i think the production on the album is good i think the songwriting on the album is good i think ace's performance considering this is ace so you can't you know what you're getting with ace and considering the guy's 72 years old it, i think i think ace puts in a good performance who really played on the on the album and who really wrote the songs on the album i don't understand why people are getting a own ace so hard about that considering kiss has had replacement musicians and 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 outside songwriters all the way back to destroyer and which you know was the holy grail of a lot of kiss fans albums but ace can't get the same pass the kiss gets so um it's kind of a little you know a little hypocrisy but uh but um but i think this is a great album and uh there's not a song on this album that I skip. I will say that as we go into where we, where, where me, you and I pick things, where everybody else picks things. 
I will say that there's not a song on here that I don't like. It's just, yeah. I like them in different degrees. And so that's how I stack them. So real quick, you guys put in the chat also what you think. Um, and real quick, Xander, what, what's your, you know, your, your cliff notes uh, thoughts of the, the album? I love it. I love it. I do. Um, I have not been this excited for an Ace Freely solo album in ever. Um, just to be honest, um, I've always been somebody who was too distracted with Kiss, too focused on Kiss to worry about what anybody else was doing because I knew Kiss was one day going to end. So I focused all my attention on that. And now that uh, Kiss is over, I think Ace picked a perfect time to release an album. Kiss fans are hungry. We want something. We want more. We never want the the train to stop. And so to, to see Ace continue on and uh, continue on in this way at this level is just exciting. When I got the album, I mean, I knew for, when hearing 10,000 Volts, I mean, the song itself was really good. It gave you a really good taste for the album. I mean, I think you said it best. The production is fantastic. The Sonics for me are what stand out. Um, it feels like a, a 2024 rock album. Um, I think it's great. And even, you know, I think how I said at one point in time uh, when we did our review on my channel, I was, you know, kind of making fun of Constantly Cute as well, saying it was one that I would never revisit and, you know, all this stuff or I would skip it. And the truth is, is that I don't. There's not a single song on the album I skip. Um, I agree with you. I like every single song. I just like them in different degrees. But I'm somebody who, you know, wants to listen to an album. I, I want to listen to it. I want to listen to it all the way through. And I want to keep listening to it. That's how I roll. I know some people, you know, can't even, I know some folks can't even finish a song before bouncing to the next song. And, you know, that's whatever. I'm someone who just likes to let the music play. I let it marinate. I let it simmer. If I buy an album, I usually listen to it. If I like it, I usually listen to it for at least two months before I switch mm -hmm. back to something else. Or I have it in rotation for a couple months just because I want it to sit and I want it to simmer. And I, I don't know about you and where you're at and all that, but I know here the weather is starting to get a little warmer. The sun's coming out. Uh, the grass is getting greener. I might have to start mowing. I'm kind of upset. But you know what I mean? Like springtime is, is in the air. And so with the warm weather, I noticed that the album sounds better in the warm weather. And I knew this was going to happen. I knew that, you know, maybe if, which I'm not saying he should have, but if he had waited just a few more months to release this, this would have been the perfect summer album. I mean, mm -hmm. could you imagine 10,000 volts coming out again during summertime? It has that summertime feel. It has that life. There's there's life mm -hmm. and there's energy in these songs, in this album. And sometimes music can be reflective of a particular season. For me, summertime is uh, the time for this album I can see right now. Um, there's just certain songs constantly cute. That sounds like something that you would maybe listen to when you're going to the beach or something. You know what I mean? It's just, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's that kind of album. So um all in all i dig it i think it's great i don't even and, and i like what you were kind of prefacing about how everybody gets um everybody gets all bogged down by politics and you know who's playing on it and is it really uh, authentic or this and that and i've heard so much because there's so many kiss fans and i've heard so much griping over the past few weeks i just can't help but crank the album louder just to drown that all out because exactly. I mean, I mean, I mean, you know me, I don't get bogged down by any of that, any of that stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm the kind of guy that if, if Ace and Tommy were to get in the room and shake hands, wearing the makeup and to get on stage, like I'd be, I'd be flipping out because it'd be so cool, you know, but some fans like to, you know, it, it gets a little weird and I respect that, you know, I respect everybody's opinions, but when it becomes overtly negative and all that, that's my, that's where I tune out. You know what I mean? So uh, personally, I've been enjoying just listening to the album. Uh, every single song is good, is great. I love it. So I don't really find um, any reason to complain. I mean, yeah, we did poke fun at a couple songs, you know, Cherry Medicine, Constantly Cute. But um, all in all, I mean, it's, it's just good rock and roll. It's good fun. I mean, Kiss has made some, let's put the X in sex. Uh, I mean, on their last album, they had Take Me Down Below. It's one of my favorites on the album. So I'm not sure what that says about me, but I just know that I like to listen to good rock and roll music and that's what exactly what this is this is a good rock album yeah i agree i, I totally agree um and you said something and, and somebody said something in the chat and then we'll get into the the video the the video the uh, the predictions and 
you said something about this is a, a summer album. It definitely is. This is one that I'm, this album is going to take me through the summer. Yeah. Uh, listening to it. Windows down. I've already jammed. Uh, it, it's weird here in the mountains, which I'm currently not in the mountains right now. I'm out on the eastern part of North Carolina. But it got warm last week. And now this week it's cold again. It's that, you know, little fake spring and oh, winter's yep. not quite out. Of, winter's not quite out of here yet. Um, and North Carolina gets that a lot. Um, I don't know about other states, but North, that happens a <laughs> yeah, lot. Definitely. North, happens yeah, definitely. Happens a lot in North Carolina. Um, and this time last week, I was walking around in shorts and a and you know a tank top in my yard doing some yard work. And now it's like we're I'm wearing a coat again. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> um, but and somebody else said uh, somebody said in there that uh, that um, it is a uh, it's a there's some songs on it that are good bubblegum songs like 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 uh, uh, un, unmasked uh, mm. it has that definitely there's some of these songs and you know we we went real in depth on a lot of these songs over on Xander's channel so when we get done here if you want to check that out we'll go we went in depth pretty in depth in the songs we're not really going to do that so much here um, but that's not really the purpose of these. It's not really review videos, and I don't really feel the need to do a review video because I've kind of already done it over on Xander's channel. But what we will do, we're about 25 minutes in. We typically like to go about an hour on these things. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead. Did you Do you have your predictions, uh, Xander? You do? Oh, you know okay. I do. Okay, so this is how we do it. For those of you who maybe have not, this is your first time, or for those of you who haven't been here in a while, you know that what we'll do is we, me and Xander will talk. We will name what our prediction is for each track. We'll start at track number 11, work our way up. We'll give each give our prediction. I'll tell which one actually won that. And then we will talk about where we listed that song yet for mm. us. Um, and then I'll mention where you guys might have listed some, where you went listed it as your favorite, your least favorite um, in, in, in that case. All right. So, um, I'll let you start since you're the guest co-host. I'll let you start with what you predicted for number 11. So this is the song that I think that people thought was the least favorite, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So I I chose Cherry Medicine um, as the one that I thought the fans would be. Uh, it was one of the ones that, like, I think when we were on my channel, I said I liked Cherry Medicine, but was a little bit hesitant towards, you know, constantly cute, whereas you guys – were like maybe thumbs down on Cherry Medicine, but or I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I think Rob maybe liked Constantly Cute, but didn't like uh, Cherry Medicine. Yep. I forget. I forget where you fell, but it seemed like mm -hmm. uh, I know reading a lot of other comments from people. It was funny hearing the comments about uh, Constantly Cute and Cherry Medicine about which one was the cringiest, which one was whatever. But it seemed like maybe because of the because of the vocal um, because of the vocal on that track, or maybe because of the um the style of writing it was it was more poppy um maybe that one would be the one and i know, I know here's angela right here i think cherry medicine is ace's catchiest song ever i thought it was absolutely catchy too i think it belongs on the radio and i agree with vanderhoff um and so but but i've heard other people you know uh say some other things about it too so honestly it could be a toss-up between cherry medicine or constantly cute but i'm gonna go with uh cherry medicine and yes i think cherry medicine rocks too <laughs> Yeah, a lot of a lot of people a lot of people are are, are digging cherry medicine. Um, I I took the easy out and I kind of uh, I kind of predicted eleven to be stratosphere because I know that with Ace's instrumentals, a lot of times people dig them. The people that are more musically inclined dig them, and uh, a lot of people you know they they don't like them. So it's usually a little bit more than the other. All right, so <clears throat> the panel. Now we had, and, and there's our, I will go ahead and, and spoil it. There mm -hmm. are three ties on this song, on this, okay. this, uh, this album. So there are six songs that are each tied with another song or three oh songs that are tied with another song for a total of six songs that are tied up in, in something at position number 11. So at 11 and 10, are the, the songs will be 11 and 10 have the same amount of points. Okay. 75. So, um, and, and the, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you how I did, I, I decided to separate them in a second. So, but coming in at 
seven at a number 11 with 75 points is constantly cute. Okay. Okay. Constantly cute. And you guys can put in the chat where you pick constantly cute. Um, the reason why it got put down at, at uh, number 11, even though it was tied with the song at number 10 was because they both had 75 points. Um, neither, nobody picked them as their favorite and uh, constantly cute had seven people that picked it as their least favorite. Okay. Whereas the song at number 10 only had five people pick it as their least favorite. Okay. That um, makes sense. So, so constantly cute for the panel comes in at um, number 11. Now, as far as me, constantly cute is actually eight for me. Uh, I picked constantly cute eight. I actually like constantly cute. Mm -hmm. Uh and uh, you know, not these, a lot of these songs on here are for uh, Lara, Laura, Lara. I can't say her name right. Lara, right? It's Lara, isn't it? Sure. Lara, Laura. Laura. I think Laura. I think One of the Laura. other. Laura, Lara. I know um, who it is. <laughs> but yeah, Ace's girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And she was a good inspiration for this band. And I can honestly say, after seeing Ace in a very dysfunctional relationship before that cost him a lot of grief financial <laughs> burden and stress and put him in a bad place I, he seems genuinely happy with with, with lara 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 i'm just gonna say lara mm -hmm. um and uh so honestly i don't have a problem with her i think she's good eight i think she's good for ace and Absolutely. a lot of people and i really hate that i really don't like the hate that she gets kind of going off on this little tangent Oh, she, she gets, gets a lot hate? of hate from people being like, oh, she's a gold digger or whatever. Oh, no. I mean, come on now. She, yeah. She had her hey. own. <laughs> I was going to make a bad joke. I don't want to go. Go ahead. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Ace don't have a lot of gold to dig. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We, hey. we think we thinking all the same. But Brent um, did it for me. Brent went there for me. Thanks, buddy. But but she had her own. She had her own thing going on. You know, fitness and art. And she's got. I mean, her and Ace met at a convention, so she's got her own thing going on. Right. So, yeah. Um, yeah. She does like her own art or whatever. So, so yeah. So I don't, I don't really, I don't really get all the, the, the Laura hate. But anyway, constantly cute. I think it's a great song. It's got a great riff and great chorus and catchy oh, yeah. chorus. So it's eight for me. Where'd it come in for you? So mine, uh, constantly cute for me, came in at number ten. So I had uh, Cherry Medicine at the bottom and Constantly Cute um, right at the top. Oh, wait a minute. You mean um, my personal prediction? Your, 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 where, did, where did Constantly Cute come in for you? So for me. So right now we're talking about Constantly Cute. Where did it come in for you, Tim? Yeah, right. for me, right. it was at the bottom, actually. For me, uh, it, was, it was at the bottom. I predicted for the fans it'd be number 10, but it was actually uh, on my personal prediction or on my personal list. Um, I... I put it at number at the, at the very bottom. You put it at, so so yeah, that's what we're talking about now. Your your pick, not your prediction. So you were one of the people that picked it as your least favorite. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But do you do like it? So it I like do like that. it. Oh yeah. It for me uh, originally it was just the concept of the song. I mean the the lyric the first lyric is "Girl, you stop traffic." The boys, they stop and stare in line. It's like we have we not grown out of the '80s. I mean, it it, it just felt right. very very elementary schoolyard. But what, once you get past that, I mean, as soon as the song comes on, there's there's no fluff, there's no weird intro. It's just right into the drums and the guitar. It has a catchy guitar riff. There's a nice sweet lead before it um, leads into the vocal. So musically the song is fantastic i think my problems at this point are just lyrically there's a couple lyrics that don't even make any sense how can she be how can she look absolute how can she look 100 how can she look whole you know what i mean it's like right how, do, how does her um her magic ensue all the others ensue right. is not the right word for that and neither is absolute it kind of makes me think of charisma you know what is my right. charisma it's like that's not how you use that but that's the joke. That's rock and roll. So once you get past all that stuff, the song, it, it really is good. It's catchy. It's fun. It's one that I said, you know, in, in my review that I would not revisit, but here I am talking about it and how much, <laughs> it, even, even if it is at the bottom of my list, I mean, there has to be a song at the bottom. You know, if we were doing favorite kiss albums, if we were doing uh, favorite kiss members or whatever, you know, there's always going to be that one at the bottom, even if you 
like it. So for me, constantly mm-hmm. cute. Yeah, I mean, it may not be my favorite, but I like it. Yeah. All right. So so you picked it at your at the bottom for you. I picked it at number eight in the panel. Uh, picked it at number eleven. All right. So number ten. What's your prediction for number ten? So my prediction for this um, is was constantly cute, but clearly I'm wrong uh, mm-hmm. because that one ended up being um, number 11. But I felt that constantly cute and cherry medicine were two of the ones that fans just really seemed to gravitate towards and loved to pick apart. So uh, cherry pick, if you will. And I agree with Vanderhoff. The songs are too short. I know Ace had his own um, Ace's idea for the album was that there should be no songs that go past four minutes. Uh, mm-hmm. In his mind, four minutes is too long of a song. So all the songs, once it hits 350, they fade out. And I felt the only songs that I think should have gone past four minutes would have been Cosmic Heart and Fighting for Life. Those two, I felt like, could have been extended past the four minute and it would have been fine. But anyway, I felt that Constantly Cute and Cherry Medicine were the two that fans kind of were most controversial about. So those are the two that I put at the bottom with Constantly Cute being number 10. Okay. My prediction for number 10, what I predict the panel was going to pick, was was constantly cute as well. So me and you predicted the same on that one. Okay. What the panel actually picked at number 10 was 75 points, and it's the same as a number 11, but it had uh, less less dislikes. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, and uh, at number 75, with no, uh, number 10 with 75 points, is Stratosphere. Oh, okay. And... Uh, Talking about songs that feel like they're too short, Stratosphere is definitely feel. Stratosphere felt like it ended when it was just getting good. Mm-hmm. It didn't follow the same. If you listen to Ace's older uh, instrumentals, a lot of them they follow this uh, pattern of where they start off very subdued, they continue to layer and layer and layer, and it builds to like a crescendo. And then it just kind of goes down and fade and goes back down to the very first fractured mirror is a perfect example. It ends the way it starts yeah. and it just does this big hump. And it's just like stratosphere. It's like it builds and builds and builds and builds and it just goes and it just stops. Yeah. It's like they just quit playing and it's like, did you run out of tape? I mean, you know what happened? Um, so I do feel like that it could have been a little, longer maybe like a minute and i think even rob mentioned that in the video that um the three of us did and i i agree with that um stratosphere for me is um it's it's the bottom uh if it possibly and instrumentals typically are for me at the bottom a lot of aces instrumentals have always been at the bottom for me um i think with the probably with the exception of escape from the island off of the elder i don't think i scored that mm-hmm. um low um but if I felt like if this could have been, if it would have been just a little longer, it actually, for me, could have edged out my number 10 and, and it could have took the number 10 spot and put and put what I picked at number 10, pushed it down. So, but it ended up being, for me, it ended up being my number 11 as well. What about, where did you pick this at for you, Stratosphere for you? So Stratosphere, actually, uh, I agreed with the panel or the panel agreed with me. So uh, for me, Stratosphere was number 10 as well. Um, I felt that Stratosphere, now I may be the odd one out because I've heard people say how Stratosphere, you know, for them felt different than any of the other instrumentals that Ace has done, particularly Fractured Mirror. And I must be the odd man out because my first reaction when I heard Stratosphere was this is what it must have felt like to have heard Fractured, at, at least the first half, maybe the first half of it for me felt very similar in a good way, felt very similar to fractured mirror in the best way possible in terms of the feel because they used a uh, fractured mirror on the soundtrack to kiss me the phantom of the park the um the european edit when they mm-hmm. used the hand of our mirror or no when they removed the hand of our bear music and they used solo album music they put fractured mirror in there and that's where i first heard fractured mirror i heard it in that version of the film before i heard it on ace's solo album so that's always kind of stood out to me uh, that piece of music from Fractured Mirror. So listening to it, hearing Stratosphere on this album kind of made me have that experience all over again. And maybe I'm just the odd man out. I'm not sure why that was musically in terms of the feel for about the first minute, minute and a half, it felt very similar. And I liked that. However, I agree. It felt too short. 
I felt that it didn't really end up going anywhere. And once you get past that minute and a half, I find myself just getting lost in my own thoughts. For instance, I'll be in the car listening to the album. Stratosphere comes on. I'm enjoying the music. And then I find myself thinking about, oh, what am I going to do today or tomorrow or what's for dinner? And then, you know, all of a sudden it's quiet in the car. I'm like, what's happening? And the album's finished. It's over. It's quiet. You know, so the song doesn't quite keep my attention as long as, you know, say Fractured Mirror would. But all in all, I still think it's great. Uh, but for me, it did end up at number 12 so far. The panel and I are the same. We both have constantly Q at the bottom. Stratosphere at number 10. I'm not sure how long it's going to continue on, but we'll see. <laughs> All right. So what about your prediction for number nine? So my um, prediction for number nine is um, Life of a Stranger, the cover on the album. All right. My prediction for number nine is Blinded. Blinded. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So number nine is also a tie with number eight. Okay. Um, and the uh, they both had the same amount of of the uh, they both had the same amount of likes as far as their favorites, but one had one more least favorite like than the other one. Okay. I'm, I'm just saying that basically to differentiate why you know why I didn't put them both tied at the same thing. Yeah, so that makes sense. number with a. 97 points. Number nine is, you guessed it, Life of a Stranger. Oh, I'm three for three. What the hell? That's crazy. All right. Life uh, of a Stranger it is. One person listed it as their third favorite. Nobody listed it as their favorite. One person listed it as their third favorite, and one person listed it as their least favorite. Mm. Um I'm going to let you go first talking about where you put this for you because I've been always saying where I put it, where I put stuff first. So where did you put Life of a Stranger for you? So on my, uh, yeah, my personal favorite list, Life of a Stranger actually ends up more towards the two thirds. Let me get a count here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ended up at number seven uh, for me personally. I, fe I felt that the cover was a lot better than the original and i like the original the original was good it actually was a song that when i first heard it i thought i could not have seen ace covering that song uh it's hard to find you can find it on youtube you might have to find a couple you videos find it on youtube yeah there's I a couple of different versions it, yeah yeah it's 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 one that when you hear it you're like ace is gonna cover this it's like it's crazy but when you hear this the the what he did on the album i i think it's great i think the uh instrumentation is great and for me, uh, it's one of my favorite vocals on the album. I think the production that they used on the verses where it has the echo, why did you do it? And then you hear do it. I like that uh, that production choice of having there be an ace echo. Um, so for me, the song, it isn't like the best song on the album, but it definitely isn't the worst. And I liked it uh, for what it was. So that's, for me, that's why I ended up at number seven. All right. For me, Life of a Stranger, it's one of those songs that I liked it the first time I heard it, the first few times. But as I have listened to the album, and I've probably I've probably got about maybe 50, 60 spins on the album now because I listen to it when I'm in the car and I listen to it when I'm driving and I drive a lot. Sometimes I'll drive long stints of driving, like three, four hours for work. Um, and so I'll listen to it usually two or three times during that time. This has the more I've listened to it, the more it is edged up. And I actually have Life of a Stranger listed as my number three oh, song wow. on this album. I love the modulations. I love that it sounds like it could be in a movie. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I think Ace is real ambitious. To, if you listen to the original, it, Ace was real ambitious to cover this song to me. Uh, and, uh, but I, I like Life of a Stranger. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's one of those songs that it would have probably been in my lower two, my lower thirds. If I'd have made this list, maybe after three or four spins, but the more I listen to it, the more I, the more I listen to the album, the more I look forward to it um, coming, uh, coming up. Yeah. Um, so, so for me, I listed it as uh, I listed it as number three. Nice. And the panel listed it as, number nine all right 
So predictions for number eight. So this is where I had put Stratosphere uh, on their list originally. Um, again, I had kind of gauged what people were saying online about what they felt was a strong song or not. And um, Stratosphere was one that I think, you know, folks have said it. Yeah, I, why did you do it? I love that. Um, why did you do it? Do that's it. great. That's great. Um, but no, I felt that this was one that, again, there were fans who were like, oh, I love this song, man. Classic Ace uh, instrumental. Perfect way to close the album. And then there were some folks that said, you know what? This could have been a lot longer or it could have been left off or didn't really do much for me. So it was one that I didn't feel was going to make it into the top half. So this is where I put it um, on my prediction list, which was eight. But obviously we know it was um, number 10, but I wasn't too far off. My prediction for uh, number eight was Life of a Stranger. So that's close. Yeah, okay. Um, the panel with 97 points uh one person picked this as their second favorite and and uh two people pick, picked it as their least favorite but the person picking it as their second favorite kind of the carried a little more weight mm. so at number uh eight with 97 points is blinded wow okay blinded I like Blinded. Uh, Blinded for me is number two on my list. And that just goes to show how this has, listening to the album has caused um, the, the songs to really shift around on my list. Because the very first time I listened to the album, the, the uh, acapella at the beginning threw me. Yeah. I wish that it really would have just started with that guitar, you know, coming mm -hmm. in from a, that's like a cold start coming in with that guitar. I felt like, and I still feel like that would have been a little more effective, but once blinded gets going and that cowbell and just, just the, it has all those signature aces, you know, you better watch your back and Ace oh. just singing up in that up register, you know, it's like a time attack, just mm. that act, act stuff that he does. Um, and singing, uh, and then when he go, then when he get into the pre-chorus, we don't know which way to go. He goes, or even who to trust. He goes, he comes down low, and then he drops into "We're Blinded by Science." I, I love it. Oh man, uh, you know, and we were we poked fun at it, going "Blinded me with science." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? um, by fear. We <laughs> and we, we're free, but, I love it. You know, but I, I still. I can't help it. I love this song. It's Dark Light says on the album. Dark Light when says starts, another coat of crack. <laughs> I'm so dangerous whenever a song plays on the road because I'll be driving down the road and when it starts, because we're blinded I'm a science. And it pauses blind my feel. And I'll let go of the steering wheel and go, oh <laughs> my hands back on the steering wheel. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I love and the song, you, you talked about how this album don't have a lot of fluff with a lot of long intros. He pretty much he starts the song in a lot of them. I mean, there's maybe a couple here and there, but he starts the song and within a few bars. He's singing the the first lyrics of the verse of the first yeah. verse. So it's like he's getting down to business, and when he's done, he's not he's he's getting the song over with. So um, yeah, blinded is second for me. What about for you? So Blinded for me was one, two, three, four, four. Uh, very high on the album, just like you. Not quite as high as it was on yours, but very same reasons. I think lyrically the song is great. Musically it's great. Um, you mentioned that pre-chorus. Uh, my, favorite, my favorite part is when it says, um, technology with no empathy, we're about to lose control. I'm like, ah, oh, that's so yeah. good. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously it's, it's not good that it's happening and it's not good that it's real, but it's just when you hear it, and Ace, when it's Ace doing it, it's like, it's per it's perfection. You know what I mean? And then, of course, we talked about how, you know, technology got us by the balls. And then how now that the perfectly. Zeros and ones rule the world. Zeros, Zeros and, and ones got us by the balls. And it just ends. I love Perfect. that. That's so awesome. It's part, I love it. 
Yeah, I know, me too. So, yeah, I I don't really mind the uh, the acapella um, intro as much as some folks do. Um, he did something similar on his other, um, oh, what album was it? I think it was Spaceman. He has a acapella intro on Your Wish Is My Command. Sounds almost the exact same. So it must be like a an ace trope or an ace cliche. <laughs> but either way, I don't know. I, I thought it was all right. But no, for me, I, yeah, I love the song. I think it's great for me. Number four on my list. All right. So, and that was, uh, that was number, um, that was number eight for the panel. So yep. what about number seven, your prediction for number seven? So I was, I guess, in hindsight, kind of close because this is where I put blinded. I put blinded, um, right almost at the halfway point. So it seems that I was not too far off. Remember, uh, space invader, we're going to be fried. Okay, for sure. I'm, I might've missed that part. But I'll have to go back and check it out. Jeb says, Jeb swears by ace invader. He says, yeah, 10,000 volts, it's all right. Have you heard Space Invader? I'm like, yes. Have you heard 10,000 volts? He goes, no, Space Invader. I'm like, all right, whatever, bro. But, you know, good for you. So he he loves uh, and swears by uh, Space Invader. But uh, I put Blinded for number seven, personally. Um, I, okay. I thought that fans liked it, but, you know, maybe um, the theme and, yeah, the intro maybe was a little, um, a little cringe for some folks. So that's why it didn't maybe make it higher on my predictions list. But. Yeah, I, predict, I predicted uh, the panel was going to choose up in the sky at number seven. Okay. All right. So there is no time for number seven. So it's simple. <laughs> <laughs> so we jumped from 97 to 115 points. Wow. And so with 115 points at number seven, the panel chose Cherry Medicine. Wow. Uh, I'm surprised Cherry Medicine got that high on the list. But good. Good for Cherry Medicine. Cherry medicine. Uh, cherry medicine for me, and don't get me wrong, like I said, I don't dislike any song on this album. The cherry medicine is down at the bottom for me. It's at number 10. Mm. Uh, and it's not that I don't like it. It's just there's nine songs I like more. Uh, I think cherry medicine's great. I, I think it's catchy. It's, you know, it's, it's a, definitely a summer song. I'm looking forward to listening to uh, this by the pool. There's a, there's a, a beer that I drink that has a cherry flavor to it that only comes out during the summer. And that's going to be my cherry medicine during, the, you know, for sure that I'm already seeing me sitting out by the pool, listen, drinking a beer, cherry, a cherry beer, listening to this song. So, um, so yeah, so cherry medicine comes in at, at, nine, at, at 10 for me. What about for you? So for me, cherry medicine was right smack dab in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, number six for me is where cherry medicine landed and that's because i love the song i do i love singing along to it i love trying to hit all the same notes ace does and say all the words with the same inflection cherry medicine cherry uh, medicine. yeah so oh. I, I love your cherry medicine i, I love, I love your cherry medicine I like trying to to sing like Ace. I think I sound more like Ace vocally than any of the other members. So maybe vocally, that's where I feel more comfortable. Is because I'm a terrible singer, but maybe I can harmonize with Ace. So this is a song that's fun to sing. But now, having said that, I'm very well aware that Ace is not the best vocalist. I'm aware that you know the vocal track, the vocal style for this song is not traditional Ace, and so it sounds very off putting to some fans. But I also am aware that the way the song is written it's meant to be a pop hook it's meant to it's meant to grab you anybody mm -hmm. could sing this and it would have that that same snap that same you know cherry medicine gotta get me some cherry medicine mm -hmm. yeah you're the one whoever sings that it doesn't matter that's gonna be a catchy hook because that's just music that's just pop right. music steve ace whoever wrote that came up with that knows pop music knows what's an earworm and ear candy how to get on the radio or how to get half a million views on youtube or whatever it's at so the song right. is is it's almost strategic in that way because it's not it's a great new yeah it's exactly exactly it, it uh, somebody mentioned earlier how it fits in with you know unmasked and dynasty um mm -hmm. that sort of ace pop that um you know torpedo girl mm -hmm. um talk to me you know it's it's that kind of stuff so yeah you mentioned you know that by the pool i mean torpedo girl you know come on get your feet wet it's like yeah, yeah exactly that's that's what i'm ready for so uh yeah for me cherry medicine right smack dab in the middle yeah um 
and and I love the I love the hook of cherry medicine. I love the course of cherry medicine. The one thing that I do kind of that that pulls it down a little bit to me is th- especially the first verse. It's almost too they they try they start it kind of stripped down. And we talked about this in your video. It's almost too stripped down. There's no doubling on Ace's voice. There's nobody singing back up with him. There's no effect on his voice. It's just very dry with a kick drum and a riff. And then as soon as it kicks into, I love your cherry, there all the instruments come in. And then whenever he comes out of cherry, man, son, yeah, you're the one. And then it goes back into kind of drops back down a little bit. But mm-hmm. then when it comes back in, he starts singing the second verse. There's drums, there's bass. There's a little bit more to his vocals. So it's almost like it's a little, to me, it's a little too stripped down in the very beginning. That would have been my producer's choice is to not have it so stripped down at the beginning. But, you know, that, it's still a good song. Yeah, it almost forces you to listen to focus on Ace's vocal at that point. It's yeah. so stripped down. You're kind of focused. You're forced to listen to Ace's vocal. You don't have that, anything else to listen to other than a that, guitar and a kick drum. And that could be, yeah, pretty off-putting. Also, you know, it's funny how, again, the production choice on the album, because if you listen to the song before that on the album is Cosmic Heart, and uh, after that is Cherry Medicine, and you listen to how thick and heavy Cosmic Heart is to how thin and cardboard that guitar is, It, I mean, it's, again, very pop-flavored. There's the heavy rock sound, and then there's the pop sound. And each song has its own not really has its own but when it needs to it serves its own purpose you know and so they they really went full pop with that song uh Mm -hmm. the guitar is not that typical crunchy ace tone um you know he is using a little bit of um steve claims to not use autotune but he uses obviously some sort of audio uh voice he says he don't use autotune but he also said that he tweaked ace's vocal stuff well, well I there's, think he does it via his own techniques without yes. using auto tune to do it. Yes, yeah. yeah, exactly. It seems like you know, it kind of like you know, you you can you can edit a video in more than one program, and so I guess mm-hmm. what he's saying is he's editing Ace's vocals with something other than auto tune, mm-hmm. which is fine. You know what I mean? We, we've already discussed that in my episode, but I think the song for what it is is great. I think that I mean, if I were in the producer's chair, I would do the same thing. Ace, how do we get you? on YouTube? How do we hit the algorithm? How do we hit that pop? You know, let's come up with something catchy that everyone's going to be humming in their car, uh, talking about on their podcast for a a month after the album comes out, because it's that good of a song, you know, how do we capture people's attention? And and you're right, because really when it comes down to uh, making a popular song, if you're ever in a crowd, what's really important is the hook. Because if you're ever in a crowd of people, with and 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 a popular song is on, you will hear people kind of muttering the verses mm-hmm. whenever the verses are being sang. But as soon as it hits that chorus and hits that hook, everybody's singing, everybody knows the words. And because in pop, that's what's important is the hook. The verses are just the things that happen in between the choruses in pop. Yep. It really yep. is. And Absolutely. uh and, and Dead Channel made a good point, too, because we know that just from our conversations that Steve and Ace tried to do some throwbacks and and that, you know, there's some throwback sounds and some throwback techniques. Mm-hmm. And he made uh, Dead Channel made a good it, the, the beginning of the beginning of Cherry Medicine is almost kind of like a throwback to the beginning of 2000 Men. The Never thought 2000 about that. Men stripped down. It's just Ace, a guitar and Peter on the toms. I never and, thought about that. It's kind of like a strip down of that. For All right. Sure. All right. So let's move on. And then Vanderhoff, yes. And the, somebody said it too. And we just got to mention that whoever's doing Ace's social media and his marketing and stuff, whoever's doing all that, man, they need like an MVP award because Ace walking around in Walmart doing shopping, he's staying relevant. He was shopping for St. Patrick's Day stuff. So it wasn't stuff that they just went in and did one time. Ace is like going, and I think Vanderhoff said that Ace lives near him and that Walmart's near him. So they're going back to this Walmart and making these little short little videos and his social media right now, Ace's social media right now is fire. And Mm -hmm. his videos, those videos, even if 
you know, even if he might get made fun of wearing the utter costume and, and walking on the moon, you know, that looked like he had udders on the front of his chest. He's, he's still making videos. He's made three videos for this album. So, I mean, and I, and there's one video I hope he still makes that we'll, we'll but we will see. So yeah. let's, let's move on to number six. What's your prediction for number six? So my prediction for number six, smack dab in the middle, is back in my arms again. I felt like people were either A, happy to see this song finally make it out of demo form onto an official album in 2024, full production, or people thought B, the demo was better. He should have left it uh, as a demo. He ruined the song. Uh, it felt like it was either one of the two. And so for those reasons, I put it pretty much smack dab in the middle. So my prediction was back in my arms again. Same for me. Same reason. My prediction for number six was back in my, back to my arms. All right. <clears throat> number six is not a tie. It's got one more point than Cherry Medicine. Okay. This actually surprised me that this was down this low. Oh you my talking gosh. about Cherry Medicine being a surprise being down this low? This surprised me, honestly, that this, this one was down this low. But with 116 points and number six is Walking on the Moon. Okay. Okay. Walking on wow. the Moon. Walk, walking on the Moon for me is number four. I love Walking on the Moon. I love that the, the drum fail at the beginning of it and just the swagger that it has when Ace is singing it and and the, the fact that the guitar stops whenever he's singing the verse that da -na 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 -na, it, it doesn't just keep going it just keeps stopping um while he's singing but uh I love I love walking on the moon I love the verse I love the chorus I love the little cowbell that goes through it the bridge mm. that he puts in there the guitar solo that e -e 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 that is ace man i mean i i love it i don't care if it's steve brown playing playing it or not at least you know he's emulating ace but i believe <laughs> ace said that steve what about tommy played, thayer <laughs> yeah he encouraged uh ace to play as many so if i think ace didn't play a lot of things on this album might not have been ace might not have played a whole lot of rhythm Oh, yeah. Steve might have took a lot of the rhythm responsibilities because Ace didn't play a lot of rhythm on the studio recordings for Kiss. That was all Paul and right. Gene. The only time Ace played rhythm a lot of the times, especially in the later years of Kiss, was on his own songs. Yeah, and he would usually play rhythm and bass and you know whatever. So I mean, I'm not going to fault Ace now for what we let him get away with in the past. <laughs> that's just kind of my whole attitude about it. So I'm not judging him now and judging him differently than we did in the seventies and the eighties. But uh, yeah. so yeah, for me, for me, walking on the moon is uh number four for me. I like it. I like it a lot. What about for you? So uh, on my personal list, walking on the moon ended up at, let's see, number eight, uh, pretty low on my list. Mm -hmm. And this might even come as a shock, but if I were to, maybe in the moment here, make an amend to my list, I may actually move Walking on the Moon to the very bottom and move oh, wow. and move Constantly Cute from the bottom and put it at number eight. Um, I'm not sure what it is about Walking on the Moon, but maybe it's just the pacing of the song. I love the drum beat. The time signature is very different for Ace. So I love the time signature. The drums, the feel of it is very cool, but mm -hmm. the tempo of the song, Ace's vocals, it's all... I think Rob used a good word, sluggish. It's just um, mm -hmm. I kind of find myself after the first chorus wanting the song to be over, kind of looking forward to the next song especially. Um, but, yeah, so I'm not going to, like, trash it because it's not a bad song at all. But I think this one may actually be one of my least favorites uh, on the album. All right. All right. So that brings us up to number five in the top five. Mm-hmm. What's your prediction for number five? My prediction for number five. So I have Up in the Sky. I personally love Up in the Sky. And I felt like a lot of people did too. We're getting kind of, when we get in the top five now, we're getting, you know, it's getting pretty close. It's getting pretty interesting. So I had a hard time figuring out what fans might put here. But I went ahead and put Up in the Sky. I think it is one of the stronger songs on the album. It does belong in the top five. But I guess we'll see what other folks think. But for me, uh, my prediction, I put it uh, in the top five for, for everybody. Okay. 
I predicted at number five that the panel was going to choose Cosmic Heart. Cosmic Heart? Yep. Um, number five is actually a tie with number four. So four and five are tied. It's the last tie. And it's tied. Uh, they are t these two songs are tied with 133 points each. So we jump from 116 to 133. The way I differentiated them was both both of these songs had three people picking them as their favorite. What really hurt one of them was the fact that somebody picked the song as their least favorite. So that immediately made that one the secondary of the two ties because they had the same amount of people that liked it as their favorite, but one that liked it as their least favorite. Mm. So with 133 points at number five is Back Into My Arms Again. Okay. Okay. Back Into My Arms Again for me is number six. Back Number six? And, okay. And I, I, it, you know, it's a, it's a, uh, the demo, you know, it's a, it's finally got its, I'm just happy that it's finally got its, uh, finally got a place as a proper recording. And, uh, I actually like it almost as much as I like the original, you know, you can tell if you listen to the demo and you listen to this, you can definitely tell that Ace's uh, voice is aged a little bit, but I think it's still, a good good song um for sure so what about you where do you put where do you have it set so back in my arms again actually is also pretty low it's actually one below walking on the moon so it's actually number nine on my list now um, again i made this you know maybe last week or so so i could change some things around but i was happy to see it come uh, as an official uh version uh come out of demo form be an official song that was really cool um, I don't really compare it to the original. I just kind of compare it to the other songs on the album. And when I think about some of the other songs I would want to hear, you know, we'll get to them. But, um, yeah, for me, I mean, it's not the worst song on the album, but it did kind of end up being pretty low at number nine. All right. So that leaves us with at number four, prediction mm -hmm. for number four. Oh, this this hurts me personally, but I felt that maybe fans would put Cosmic Heart at number four. I felt that uh, there were a good chunk of fans who were like me and shared a love for Cosmic Heart, but maybe it didn't quite reach the top of their list. So I'm going to put Cosmic Heart in the top five here. One, two, three, number four. I'm going to put Cosmic Heart at number four. Okay. My number four prediction, I thought number four was going to be Walking on the Moon. That's why I said it surprised me that Walking on the Moon was down as low as it was. I thought it was uh, more well-received, at least by our panel, than that. Mm. So um, number four is a tie with number five, 133 points. But it got the higher spot because three people picked it as their favorite. And so... With 133 points, at number four is Up in the Sky. Up in the Sky, okay. Up in the Sky is number four. Up in the Sky for me is number one. It's my favorite song on the album. It's nice. it's the one that when I get in the car, and if I'm going to put this on streaming, I go to Up in the Sky. I let Up in the Sky play. I let it play through Stratosphere, and I let it start over again and go through the album because I want a double dose of Up in the Sky because it, it was my – it was one of those, it, I, I liked it extremely a lot the very first time I heard it. It's like, okay, I had heard 10,000 Volts. I'd heard Cherry Medicine. I'd heard Walking on the Moon. Those are those songs all come relatively early. And then the other songs, as I heard them, I I didn't have a, a bad feeling about any of them. I didn't hear a song where I'm like, oh, God, I can't. Oh, this song sucks. I don't like this song at all. I didn't have that feeling towards any song. Until I, when I got to Up in the Sky, I was like, oh, this is a good song. This is a good song. It reminded me of Classic Ace, like Up in the Sky, I think, and I think I said it in your video, and I said don't throw things at the screen. Up in the Sky, to me, could have been on Ace's 78 solo album. And oh, yeah. It, it, Up in the Sky is awesome. It, and I yeah. will put it right there on that 78 solo album and, and get unsubscribed by 
by hundreds of people. But <laughs> me too. Me too. Bring it. <laughs> but but I just I just feel like up in the sky is that good. Um and uh so and I, I love the and it's relevant. I mean, you know, I mean just this year the government our government confirmed there's a such thing as UFOs. Mm -hmm. So ACE is being very relevant with blinded talking about the dangers of AI. I work in IT and AI is extremely dangerous if it's used incorrectly and used by the wrong people in the wrong ways. It is extremely dangerous. Um, and, uh, and hey, you know, now we know we're not alone. They're up in the sky. I know what I saw. Um, can't <laughs> trust the news. Lights. Can't trust the law. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I just right. love that. I love that. And then he is that, that just that ace attitude. Thank God. Just say good night. <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah, just screw it. Just, just screw it. I'm taking that's off. That, that's that ace tone that I love. Just screw it. I love it. I love up in the sky. I'm I gotta shut up about it because I could talk about it and make this video longer than it is. But yeah. <laughs> what about you for up in the sky? So up in the sky for me, one, two, three, four, number five. This is just below blinded. So again, the top five is really tricky because this song, this album is great. There's tons of great songs, and so it gets pretty hard. To rank them, I almost feel bad saying that Up in the Sky is number five because it just feels so low. But I rank it very high because, I mean, same reasons for you. It's a very fun song to listen to. It is relevant. It does have – I love the the count off in the beginning. I think that, that's Matt Starr on drums, right, doing the count off. Mm -hmm. One, two, yeah. three, to bam, yeah. bam, to bam, to bam. And then so the, the guitar intro, the drums, musically it's a very fun song, but lyrically yeah. it's a fun song. So, yeah, I mean, not much more to say to it other than that. I think the placing of the song on the album was important, too, because I know I've talked about in the past how, and we all agree, I'm sure, that where you put a song on the album will, it can help make or break a song. And, of course, when you make an album, you want to have peaks and valleys. You want to place the songs in a way that makes sense. And, you know, you can't help but think, man, this is a great album. Is it going to kind of fall off at the end? Is it going to peter out? No. Right. Right. This, song, this is number this is number uh 10 on the album. This is, the, this is almost the last song on the album, and it's every bit as good as the songs before it. Mm -hmm. And that's important. You want to end an album as strong as you start it, and I think Ace did. So that's why for me, up in the sky ranks pretty high. It's high up in the sky. <laughs> it's high up in the sky. Man, I know, I know what, what I, I saw. saw. I know what <laughs> I saw. You can't trust the news. You can't trust the law. That's right. All right, so top three. Top three, go. getting down to getting dicey. And there so, is no tie. There is no tie in the top three. The top three are actually pretty well separated from the from from each other. <laughs> wow, for sure. So it's nice to see that uh, apparently Cosmic Heart is going to be in the top three because we haven't heard that one yet, and that's my favorite. But for me personally, I thought that 10,000 volts would be uh, – number three on maybe most fans list because I felt like it was a well-received track. Folks liked it, um, but it wasn't their favorite off the album. And for me, when I first heard it, I was like, Oh my gosh, this is one of the best a songs I've ever heard. And it's one of my favorite. And then I heard the album and I heard two more songs on the album that ended up being my favorite. And so I think fans also had a similar experience where you hear the single, you love it. It gets you to listen to the album, to buy the album but then you find other things in the album that are better. So I think 10,000 Volts was a good song, but maybe not number one. I'm going to put it at number three. I predicted number three was going to be Cherry Medicine because I just thought Cherry Medicine was a more well-received song. So Yeah. Um, but with 137 points, the number three song that the panel chose is Cosmic Heart. That's good. Cosmic Heart is at number three. Cosmic Heart for me is, this sounds bad, but it's not. But Cosmic Heart for me is at number seven for me. Okay. I love Cosmic Heart. I love that this is basically Ace's mantra. It says, this is who I am because it has a lot of the word I in it. I did this. I did this. Um, and so I think Cosmic Heart is like Ace saying, this is who I am and I have a Cosmic Heart. That's why I continue to write songs about space and stuff because I am the spaceman and, 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 you know, so uh, that's why I think he, uh, 
Cosmic Heart, I think, is great. It's a it's a really true true it's a true spaceman song, without saying spaceman. So, right. what about you? I know that you really like this song. Number one. Yeah. This for me is number one on the album, and it was from the moment I heard it. So, of mm -hmm. course, it's number three on the album. I had already heard tracks one and two. They were the first singles. So listening to it on release day with the album in my car, um, I was like, okay, I'm ready to hear this third track. What is the third track? The first new song on the album I'm going to hear. And all of a sudden, it just boom, and just boom and it keeps you keep getting hit the riff is just huge it's almost like the riff and within just huge sounding and the drums are just punching you in the face i'm looking around like about to blow my speakers out i'm on i'm doing 55 on the highway i'm making sure i gotta stay straight like this this is crazy the big production and of course ace comes in it's like i've traveled all of this world i've tasted life to the max met the kings and the queens and it never that just the all every lyric in that song is hard is mm -hmm. awesome flying high in the sky ignoring warning signs woke up one day and my soul wasn't mine but i got a cosmic heart and it can't be torn apart my yeah. he says my blood will flow faster than mere mortals and i yeah. can't be controlled i'm just like golly yeah. what i'm telling this is, you i'm telling you amazing and like i said hate me or not pick this song up move it over set it down on creatures of the night oh okay for sure wow yeah for sure yeah I, yeah, I think it could fit on Creatures of the Night. It could have fit on Lick It Up. Of course, you know, Ace wasn't really involved in those albums very much, but it has that same feel that Lick It Up and Creatures has. You know, I've always looked at Lick It Up and Creatures as kind of like sister albums. They have the very mm -hmm. same feel, very same attitude on both of those. But yeah, Cosmic Heart, one of those songs that has such balls to it and such attitude to it, that I think it, it it could it could easily gone on, or it could have if Ace would have been involved, it could have gone on an album like Revenge. Mm. Uh, you know, could it could it, it could go on a song an album that had other songs that had that girth to it. Yeah, that that this is who I am, this is what I'm about, and and I don't like somebody said who was it said, uh, Dead Channel, Cosmic Heart is the new I Love It Loud. It's okay. it's a it's don't want no compromise. This is who I am. This is what I'm about. This is you know, I like it. Um, but yeah, can't I can't be hypnotized? You can't read my mind. Ugh. I mean, yeah, I'm just saying. It just has that feeling of Golly. that 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 lick it up slash creatures feel to it. It makes you feel yeah. tough when you listen to it. Yeah, it makes you feel tough. It makes you feel like you're ace. You just traveled the seven seas and saw the rising sun. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. yeah, let's go. Love that song. All right. So that brings us up to number two. Number two, I know I'm wrong. Uh, not only am I wrong, I'm way wrong. But I thought Walking on the Moon was going to be number two because I thought mm -hmm. people loved this song. I, I mean, even though I wasn't you know, that attached to it, it seemed like everybody else really dug the song. So I may have overshot what, my, what I thought, but... Um, Ace wanted to do a heavier album than The Elder. Well, he should do an album like The Sound of Cosmic Heart. He should do a, he could have had 11 Cosmic Hearts, and this album would still be the best Ace album I've mm -hmm. ever heard. That's how much I love Cosmic Heart. I think Cosmic Heart is great. Maybe a little too much. But anyway, I thought Walking on the Moon would be number two. Um, but I guess I overshot. I went way over the moon with that one. <laughs> I thought that, uh, oh, I see, over the moon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought that uh, number two was going to be fighting for life. Okay. We haven't heard that one yet. No, we haven't. Um, number two, with 165 points, jumping from 137 to 165. Is it 10,000 volts? And number two, 10,000 volts. 10,000 volts. That's pretty 10, good. 10,000 volts for me is number five. I love okay. 10,000 volts. I, it has that 10,000 volts. Him putting that song first was perfect because God. it was his way of saying, not every song on this album may be like this, but there, this is the, this is kind of setting the, the standard. There's, there's songs that's going to be harder and there's songs that's going to be more bubble gummy or, or I don't really, he has even, even, 
back into my arms, even though it's a, like a ballad, I don't really think it's soft. And uh, Life of a Stranger is not soft. Um, but uh, 10,000 Volts kind of like sets the bar for this is what this album's going to be. And, but you got heavier songs. You got heavier songs like Cosmic Heart, Fight for Life, Up in the Sky. Mm. You know, mm. so, uh, but yeah, I think, I think 10,000 Volts is a great song. And it was definitely great, the perfect placement to start this uh, this album. What about I you? Totally, I totally agree. For me, it's number three. I mean, it's it's definitely. I think it's yeah, it's top five for both of us, and I think rightfully so. I mean, we we you have it at five, I have it at three, they have it at two. I mean, that speaks for itself. It's a great song. Uh, somebody said, yeah, preparing your palate. You know, the album kind of that's how it starts off the album. And I think you know when you think about classic Kiss albums, you have Love Gun. The, starts off with I Stole Your Love. You know, you've got mm -hmm. even Sonic Boom with Martin and Delilah. You know, Kiss has a history of having these epic opening tracks. Uh, King of the Mountain, um, I've Had Enough Into the Fire. You know, the list goes on. So I think, you know, Ace maybe was wanting to have a killer opener on this one too, and he did not mess around. Um, when I first heard the song, I, I loved it. But as I kept listening to it, it just kept getting better and better and better. And mm -hmm. once I started hearing uh, Steve talk about it and talk about how David Julian made that riff in a sort of firehouse, cold gin, classic kiss way, you know, it just clicks. It just makes sense. Now you understand why you, you knew you'd like it, but you didn't know why. Well, now you know why. It's rooted yeah. in history. It makes sense. It's perfect. Um, to me, the song is it's 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 a 10. But for me personally, it's uh, number three. Yeah, I think I saw somebody, I don't, I can't remember where they saw it, but I saw the comment somewhere. They said that 10,000 volts was the new shock me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even though he says black, talks about black leather and cherry medicine, that's another one of those throwbacks that he does. And there's a song on here we talked about in your video where he says, having the magic touch. <laughs> uh, you know, so he does a lot of throw, and I know it, and I know it, this is all intentional. This oh, is yeah. not like in oh it just coincidence. It was uh, everything was intentional about this album. Steve, being the huge Kiss fan that he is, he was honored to work with Ace, um, and uh, and Ace. I think Ace wanted to make, you know, Ace said that he wanted to make something. You know, he always says, you know, how they always are. I'm gonna make something better than my '78 solo album. No, you're not. <laughs> you will never make anything better than your '78 solo album. But I want. But I'm appreciative that he is trying for that bar. Mm. You know, because he he's not gonna he's not gonna achieve perfection twice, but you can strive for it. There's a saying in my in my uh, in my organization that we strive for perfection and achieve excellence. Okay, there you go. Because if you you're not gonna get perfection, but you but if you're shooting for perfection, you're gonna get excellent. Sure, so, and I start, think that's what he did. He, he he got excellent. Yeah. So, uh, um, so yeah, so we know that that leaves what that leaves, but what'd you at least predict for number one? What was your prediction? <laughs> I had a very strong feeling that fans were going to pick fighting for life as number one. Uh, there was just an overwhelming amount of positivity towards that song, even myself. Um, well, I'll tell you very soon where, where it ranks for me, but, uh, I just had a very strong feeling that this was going to be number one for everybody. Okay. My well, I predicted at number one, I predicted uh 10,000 volts because I predicted fighting for life second. I knew it was either going to be um one of those, yeah. Um, with 177 points, and then now think about this 177 points out of possible um 209. Yeah, there you go, that ranks high, so it is high, it is high. Um, fighting for life, fighting for life for me ranked at. Don't throw things at your screen. Fighting for Life for me ranked at number nine. The reason oh. why it ranked that low for me is because there's eight songs I like better. And, and <laughs> yet, believe it or not, believe it or not, Constantly Cute is higher. I ranked Constantly Cute higher than Fighting for Life, and I'm not going to hide my face because I did it. <laughs> um, Fighting for Life is one of those songs that I like it. Don't get me wrong, but don't skip it. And you know, you can, don't unsubscribe. Um, but at the same time, it's one of those songs that that this is 100% personal 
I don't even call it opinion, more like preference. Okay. I, I have a really hard time with songs that tell stories. Like, like Tommy used to work on the docks, you know, and mm-hmm. uh, uh, like, I, I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of the song, Hide Your Heart, even though I think Ace did the better version. Now, you know, there's both camps on that. I'm just not big fan of rock story songs and where it's got a bunch of names in it and this, that, and the other. Um, some people love them. And if you love them, that's great. But my, but my personal preference is that those usually have a tendency to fall a little South for me, but at the same time, I still love fighting for life. I love how heavy it is. I love that. It's just, you know, real, real cool. Um, but uh, what do you what do you think about fighting for life? Get fighting some of the for- heat off me because I've got them literally <laughs> saying they're unsubscribing in the comments. <laughs> yeah, Dark Light, don't don't subscribe, Dark Light. No, Dark Light, um, you've been here since the beginning, so it's been a good run, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, no. Um, so Dark for me, fight my people. He's been here since the beginning. That's awesome. For me, fighting for life is number two. Um, I had Cosmic Heart as number one, fighting for life two, and ten thousand volts. Number those are my top three. Uh, Cosmic Heart, Fighting for Life, 10,000 Volts, Fighting for Life. I mean, there's two kinds of heavy. There's there's slow heavy, like Cosmic Heart, and there's, of course, fast heavy, mm-hmm. like Fighting for Life. And both, I like both um, equally. I just think the the experience I had listening to Cosmic Heart on the album is the reason why it makes it as number one. It was just hearing it for the first time as it was um, just was amazing. But Fighting for Life, to me, is probably the strongest song on the album. And it's one I think I've mentioned. If I sound like a uh, broken record, I apologize. I say some of the same things on my show and your show and all that. But um, when it comes to fighting for life, I felt like, hang on, let me figure out. So, okay, for me, number one, uh, Rip It Out Drums. It has that. Mm -hmm. Um, It has uh, Killer Ace. I don't mind the storytelling. Um, I know like like, like you do. But to me, overall, this is a song kind of like Shout Mercy where to me, Shout Mercy was the strongest song on Monster. But I don't I didn't want that to be the single because I felt like Hello Hallelujah was like 10,000 volts. It entices you and gets you in before you get the meat, the real stuff. So ten uh, so Fighting for Life for me um was played very well. Like everybody says it should have been a single. I don't think so. I think it was good that that was left, you know, about half what what was it, halfway on the album? Yeah, about halfway on the album, fighting for life. Um, I thought that, that that was perfect placement because you know you, you get you get so far into the album, and you're wondering again, is it going to fall off or you know can it really stay as strong as it was? And the answer is yes. We mentioned up in the sky being number ten. I mean, this one is smack dab in the middle. One of the best songs on the album is smack dab in the middle. So mm-hmm. um, I mentioned my favorite song at the beginning. So it's like no matter where you're at in the album, you have some There's good songs all the way through it. Everywhere. The yeah, there's time. good songs. You got them at the beginning, you got them in the middle, and you got them at the end. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't start off and then peter out the whole way down. It 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 goes. It does a series of rock, poppy, ballad, rock. Oh, we're back rocking again. Oh, we're going to do ballad a little bit, little pop, and then we're going to rock again at the end, and then we're going to you know fly you off into the stratosphere at the end. I Bingo. think it, the track the tracking is very well done. I don't know how if I was to tr- retract this album, I don't know how I would retract this album. Uh, I, think yeah. I think it's pretty tracked pretty well. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, there isn't a song I would move around anywhere. I, I think it's perfect. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, and I don't know, it's something, you know how sometimes you're listening to one song and then another song just kind of comes out of nowhere in it? When it's in that part of when it's doing that fighting for life, fighting for life, I hear breaking the law. I know it won't go. I know breaking the law is breaking the law, breaking the law. It's a whole different pattern and a whole different, you know, cadence. But I still hear that fighting for life, breaking the law. It's just my brain just pulls, goes and opens up a a file and pulls a song out and inserts it into another song. And (laughs) yeah, it's just one of the, you know, one of the weird things about living (laughs) my brain. (laughs) <laughs> what's up to, uh, right. shout out to uh bill phelps just popped in what's up bill how hey, you doing bill. hey bill good to see you thanks for joining us 
Uh, let's see. So I'm going to recap real quick, and then I'm going to talk about uh, – I wanted to talk about just one little final highlight of you guys because I want to talk about the people that send the panel and where you chose your favorite song yet. Um, so uh, the to recap, we had uh, – the panel chose Constantly Cute at number 11. It was tied with uh, um, Stratosphere at number 10. Then uh, Life of a Stranger was number nine. Blinded was number eight. Cherry Medicine was number seven. Uh, Walking on the Moon uh, was number six. Back to My Arms Again was number five. Up in the Sky, number four. And, uh, you know, hey, at least I got a top five out of it. Uh, Cosmic Heart, number three. Uh, 10,000 Volts, number two. And Fighting for Life is number one. And looking at who picked what, so <clears throat> – uh, Kiss Dude, Angelo, picked uh, 10,000 Volts as his favorite. Rick R. picked uh, 10,000 Volts as his favorite. Nobody picked Walking on the Moon as their favorite. Um, let me turn my phone here so I can see this. Um, Cosmic Heart, Xander picked it as his favorite. Evil Eyes picked it, Cosmic Heart as their favorite, and so did Emily Graziano. Uh, Cherry Medicine, Super Kiss picked that as his favorite. Uh, John B. Good picked... Uh, Back into My Arms Again is his favorite. Uh, Michael Lean picked that as his favorite. And Tales of a Kiss Geek picked uh, Back into My Arms Again as his favorite. And then uh, Fighting for Life was uh, Thomas Hoogner. Uh, Starman, King of Kings. Uh, Sublime. Emily Graziano. No, not Emily Graziano. Future Squash, Metalhead, and David King was Fighting for Life. Nobody picked Blinded as their favorite. Nobody picked Constantly Cute as their favorite. <laughs> Up in the Sky, I picked as my favorite. Um, Dark Light picked it as his favorite. And Jason Flom from the uh, Music of Kiss picked it as his favorite. And nobody picked Stratosphere as their favorite. And so the most liked song with the most likes was Fighting for Life with six, the most likes. And the most unliked song was constantly cute with seven of the lowest the low scores of seven so um so yeah so that's it well oh, the panel has spoken <laughs> the panel has spoken and uh and uh i um I, it's, this was a this was a really good one to get back in the swing of things uh and i'm going to uh i think the next thing i want to do is I want to do a, um, I think the next panel I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out a track versus track. Okay. And uh, I'm, I'm still debating over which one, what I'm going to do, but I'm going to do some type of track versus track. I know that there were some matchups from Kiss albums back in the day that we didn't quite get around to, that we were wanting to get around to. And uh, I'm trying to get, uh, uh, try you know, try to have Xander back on for one, try to have Rob back in for one. And somebody I'm trying to get back uh, is um, Carla, who was in a lot of my track versus track. She did a lot of the panel track versus track with me a couple years ago, and uh, she had a baby, and so she, you know, took some time off from from doing uh, videos with me. And I talked to her recently, and uh, she is definitely uh, game to come in and uh, maybe do one or two. So uh, you know, I might since uh, she's wanting to. Uh, do one. I might talk to her about, Hey, what do you want to do? Cause, uh, I like to have the people's inputs. that's going to be in the video. So, uh, we'll try to get uh, another panel poll out in the next couple weeks. But yeah. so thank you everybody. I've seen us go up as high as 21, 22 people. We pretty much maintained 15 or greater, uh, through this. I, I, thank you so much, everybody for spending an hour and a half of your time with us. And, uh, and interacting in the chat, you've definitely been very active. And I've tried to put up every single um, quote or every single comment as they come through. Just been kind of going down through the uh, through the thing and and just making sure that you guys are seen and uh, that you guys are appreciated. Yeah, Bill, you can go back and watch it on the replay. Uh, you'll be able to come back to the video, and it'll be available for replay pretty much right after we get done uh, in the live. I have so, a, uh, 
Can I say something real quick? I have a surprise sure. for everybody. Uh, sure. So while we're at the end here, I'm going to reward everybody who uh, stayed tuned to the end. So uh, today, the day we're recording is March 19th, which of course is the anniversary of the release of Dress to Kill. And so I have my uh, record here. I wanted to quickly show everybody um, celebrate uh, Dress to Kill. There is the uh, awesome back cover. Of course, everybody loves the the embossed image. But um, so I wanted to do this because you were so kind to do an unboxing and opening on my show. And even though I already opened this on my channel, it hasn't been uploaded yet. So you're going to be seeing it here on your channel live first before the unboxing and the opening on my video. But I wanted to do this for uh, your people and for you, Brant, because I have you to thank for this. So uh, I'll try and do my best to get it unrolled here. Uh, and if that doesn't spoil it, I don't know what will. But uh, anybody, everybody can see this awesome oh, poster. You got here. one. I got it. So um, you have to go back and watch my episode, guys. I forget. I think it was eighty-eight. Uh, Brant showed this poster that he got, and Rob and I went absolutely nuts over it. And so Brant sent us the link, and uh, I had to get mine immediately. And so here it is: the Kiss Blacklight poster from twenty twenty-one with uh, Kiss from I think twenty fourteen on it pretty awesome it has the i have a shirt with this exact graphic on it but now i have a black light poster and so thank you my friend for the tip on this this is awesome i love this anytime anytime so i wanted to show that uh as we're closing up yes and uh go ahead and plug your channel and all your social media again for anybody that's come here at the end absolutely everybody so if you want you can check out uh, myself on Kiss Army Things YouTube channel. We have a podcast. Episodes go up every Sunday at noon. We also have some other non-podcast uh, videos, just some cool, fun Kiss videos. And uh, also, you can follow us on social media, Facebook and Instagram. So check us out, Kiss Army Things. And thank you so much, Fran, for having me on, man. This has been a blast. Thank you. Thank you, Xander. And thank you to everybody. Thank you to everybody in the chat, everybody who put in on the panel. Just keep my eye on social media. I put the panels up on the community page of my YouTube. I put them up on the Instagram and put them up on Twitter. You can find me at all three of those. Or you know where to find me on YouTube because you're watching it right now. But you can find me on Instagram and on Twitter or X at uh, In My Head Channel. And uh, we will have another one soon. And uh, so we should be setting and in, setting inside of another results video here in the next three weeks to a month from now. So anyway, I know we used to do these every week and it was a highlight of a lot of people's weeks. It was live Wednesdays and, and uh, I just don't have the time to do that anymore, but we can do at least one a month. Uh, so we'll try to get one. And uh, everybody said, that's a sweet poster. Uh, light the incense. Incense and turn on the black light. <laughs> so, yeah. So thanks everybody. The uh, heart, Dark Don't light. To apologize. I, I love it. I love your little anecdotes and everything. Uh, good night, Glenn. Get some sleep, Glenn, and everybody. If you're watching on the watching live now, watching on the repeat, we appreciate you. Thank you, and we will see you in the next video next time. All right, bye, everybody.